Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Nadine. Thank you for being here. If you like what you're seeing on my channel so far, if you wouldn't mind subscribing, I would really appreciate it. So today I'm gonna do an 18 by 24 canvas. As you can see, I've already used this canvas. I'm just not feeling it. There's like, I don't know if you can see it, but there's like lines that go this way. And I'm pretty sure it's cause I set it against something before it was fully cured. Yeah, it bothers me, so. I'm a perfectionist, so there's that. <laughs> so, I'm gonna do a straight pour on this 18 by 24 canvas. This is a level two gallery wrapped canvas. It's not a deep edge one, it's just the regular one. I have it taped, and then I have these hooks on it to um, help level it. And then they also are good to help um, when you're tilting, you can kind of pivot your canvas with it. And then it also raises it off the surface. Okay, so just before I get started, I need to mention that this colors palette is definitely inspired by Gina DeLuca, who is one of my favorite all-time artists who has taught me so much about acrylic pouring. Just have to say that first of all. Okay, so the base coat, this is, um, this is basically like a Naples yellow color that I made. A Liquitex Basics um, Cadmium Yellow Medium Hue, and then the white. And I put probably a lot more white than yellow in it. Okay. And the next color we have is Dioxazine Purple. And I also added a tiny bit of white to that but really just like a tiny bit, like, like, I don't know, a little tiny, not even spoonful, like a real tiny bit. And it's just to brighten it up because ecstasy and purple dries very dark, almost black. 24 karat gold. Um, there's a lot better selection of these if you buy them on the website. That's what I do. And the next color we have is the Golden's Ultramarine Purple. I don't have the actual bottle because for whatever reason, I decided to throw them away after it was done mixing before I recorded this. So don't mind the color that it sells, but this is what the bottle looks like that I had. Okay. And the next color we have, this is the Folk Art Treasure Gold series, and this is the Purple Topaz. Again, I accidentally threw out the bottle. I don't know why, but this is what it looks like, the bottle. Okay, and then the next color is the Folk Art Treasure Gold series, and this is the Antique Copper. It's a very pretty, it's like a copper with a purple undertone. And again, I don't know why throughout the bottle, but this is what the bottle looks like if you're looking for it at the store. Okay, so my paints are mixed about two parts pouring medium to one part paint. That's a rough estimate though, you guys. I don't really measure at all. It's a lot of it is by, for, by feel for me. So I'm really guessing there. All right, let me just move these out of the way and then we'll get started. Oh, and then my pouring medium that is, um, I use Flowitrol and GAC 800. It's about 75% um, Flowitrol to 25% GAC 800. But again, I'm really guessing. I don't measure at all when I mix or anything. I don't use a scale. I don't, you know, I don't even know if I, I just guess. <laughs> That's just how I do it, so. So yeah. Oh, let me show you their consistency before I forget here. The Exocene Purple, I don't 
with the straight pour, I get better results when I use just a mound versus a mound on a mound or thin. I don't know why, but like my cells always lose shape no matter how slow I tilt. So this is just what works for me for this technique. So it's not too thick. Here's pretty right away. It, you know, it's not a mound on a mound and it's not thin to where it just dissipates in there. I would say this is about like a two or less on Gina DeLuca's scale if you've ever watched her consistency videos. Okay, so we're gonna do a straight pour. We're gonna put our, no, we're gonna layer our cup first and then we'll put our base coat on. That's what we're gonna do. Yep. <laughs> so, I'm gonna put a little in here in the bottom, like, for the background color, kind of like Gina DeLuca does. I don't know, do I want to layer a cup or do I want to dirty pour it? Always dirty pour it, I feel like. I feel like I want to layer the cup, so yeah, I'm going to layer the cup. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. And I need about 15 ounces, so like this whole cup basically, or a little less. All right. So, going to start layering our cup here. All right, so I'm just gonna pour it down the side of the cup here. A little more, y'all, yeah, not a lot. Just a little, just to kind of separate it, I guess. And then some more purple, the ultramarine purple. Again, we're just pouring down the side of the cup. I'm not sure how this is gonna come out. You guys have never done this, so we'll see. I mean, like these colors, like this style. And some gold. You wanna go easy on the 24 karat gold. It tends to really take over if you use too much. Then I think I'm gonna go with the purple topaz. Again, down the side. And then some antique copper. Again, pouring down the side of the cup. Okay. And then I think we're just gonna repeat that process. So pretty. I mean, that's why not as much, but. <laughs> okay, and now I'm just gonna throw some of this base coat on the top. It kind of helps to like separate the layers for like the cells, kind of. I don't know. Oh no, I don't want it to blend. Trying not to push hard on it so we don't want it to blend. We just want it to like sit on top, kind of. that so it's just like a layer on top and we have our beautiful cup ready to go okay now I am going to put on a base coat I, um, I always use a base coat like every time I paint like if I don't use a base coat I feel like weird like I, and I just can't get good results without a base coat honestly so I always use a base coat I'm actually like very anti like using a flow extender i kind of feel like i don't know you might as well just put a base coat on maybe that's just me but no i mean and other artists get beautiful results with you know the way they do it it's just that's me my personal thing but i always use a base coat and it helps everything to slide around on and it also just helps like keeping your composition like i've had times where like my cells 
That's so messed up because I didn't have a base coat. Like I need a base coat personally. So that's what we're gonna do next. We're gonna put our base coat on here. This is the Naples yellow color. So I'm gonna pour in the center. I might try to move my arm around in the certain ways, but I haven't totally figured that out yet. So here we go. It's just, I don't know, I've never been a fan of a, I'm really particular. So you guys wanna um, torch this and you need to torch it for several minutes and you should let this sit. Um, I would let it sit anywhere from three to five minutes because that's when everything um, develops. I'm just gonna move this just a touch because it's starting to go too close to the edge there. Okay, so yeah, you want to let it sit for like, I don't know, like three to five minutes before you start tilting because you're letting um, all the chemical reactions take place. You're giving time for it to take place. And then when you start tilting, those cells are going to grow and grow even more. So you have to give it time to work, basically. Ooh, this is really pretty right here. I don't know if you guys can see this. This lacing right here is really pretty. Oh, and this right here, this is so pretty. You can see these saddles. This is really pretty. A lot prettier than what was on top, I'm not going to lie. Well, I think. Let's tilt it out first and then we'll, we'll talk. <laughs> do its thing and hopefully it doesn't go off the edge here. I kind of poured it a little off center, I think. And I have too much paint on here. I can tell you that for sure. I want to try to preserve this part if possible. I love this lacing right here. This is so pretty. I don't know if I can show you while we're waiting here. With it because it's going off the side over here. So yeah, we're gonna go this way. We're gonna see which way the paint wants to go and see where the weight's moving the fastest. That's um, how you control your paint. Wherever the weight of the paint is at, that's how you like move it kind of. And you want to tilt like really, really slow. I know on camera it looks like we whip our paint around, but like seriously, I will probably leave some of this in real time just so you can see. But yeah, you want to tilt very slow. Like, it's not a race. That's how you, like, lose all your cells. And how they get all wonky, at least mine. So you want to tilt really, really slow. I don't know if you can see, like, how slow I'm going. But, like, it's barely, like, reached anywhere this way yet. You have to tilt extremely slow. So yeah, like really, really slow. I'll speed up some of this, um, but I thought like it's good to see in real time exactly how slow you have to tilt. Like really slow, like I think I'm actually going a little too fast now.
want to make sure you scrape all the drips under your canvas for like the first hour every like, I don't know, like 15 minutes because it will keep pulling paint. And if you don't do this step, and when you come back in the morning, it will pull like all your paint and it will look very different from how you left it. Let's just say that. Okay, I need to, yeah, I just wanna go in here and scrape these for the fir first hour after you're done. Going to bring it in for a close up. Um, if anyone ever has any questions about anything, please feel free to ask me or feel free to write in the comments. Um, but I really appreciate everybody being here and all your support that you've shown me. I really, really appreciate it. And I will show you when it's dry. I'll probably put the pictures or a video in this video as soon as it's dry. But I really, really like this. It really came out really nice. The only thing I'm gonna change is like, when I was pouring, I think I came like this way, sort of. And I think I made a design that I didn't really care for, so that's why I tilted a lot of that off. But I was able to save it. I mean, that's the thing with using extra paint. Sometimes you give yourself an option. So if it comes out to where you don't like something, you can change it still. So that's one of the good things about using too much paint is, yeah, you can do that. But I really like it. I got like these boulder cells and the lacing with the naples yellow it looks like it's like glowing in between the cells um when i take it out for a close-up i'll show you i'll take you in for a close-up and you can let me know in the comments what you think and maybe try this color palette yourself and let me know if you like it or not all right, I'm gonna take you in for a close-up. Here is the wet result. Like I said, I really, really like this. It's really pretty. Okay, I'm gonna take you in for a close-up. So, here's this corner. I absolutely love that lacing. You see how it looks like it's glowing in between there? That's what I'm talking about. It looks so pretty. And I'm gonna go up here. I got some really good cell action. And you guys, I don't know if I mentioned this at all, and I'm, I apologize if I did not, because, wow. Oh, um, let me finish showing you this. So I do not use any silicone in my paint whatsoever. I have not since I first started painting. So you can get cells without silicone. I, as a matter of fact, I have a hatred towards silicone and no offense to anyone that uses it. I just personally don't like the look that you get when you use it and the fact of all the cleanup. But so here you go, straight pour, no silicone, tons of cells, lots of boulder cells, regular cells. I think this is absolutely gorgeous. Well, here's the wet result. I will put some pictures or a little video of it when it's dry. Um, thank you all for being here with me and for all your support. And I will see you next time. Bye. Hi, right, you guys. It's me and Aideen. I just wanted to show you the dried result of this one, which I really liked. Unfortunately, I had some 
issues go wrong with it and I will show you in a minute. So unfortunately, this one's probably gonna get thrown out because I had some issues with the canvas and I'll show you. Okay, so I had to put it up on the stands in order to show this to you. So the first issue that happened was my edges, as you can see, I repainted them because there was like big lines all down the center of my edges, which is no good really. I must have hit it on something and didn't notice and so that bothers me. I don't like when the edges are like repainted and you can tell, especially when I went too far towards the edge as you can see. I mean, yeah, I could fix it, but there's some other issues so it's not even like worth it all right so there's that issue and now so this canvas was like really saggy and i tried spraying it with water numerous times before and after the pour and it's still like that i'm gonna try to show it to you on camera here so you can see when I hit it from the back, it kind of is like really wobbly. I'm hoping you can see that, but and it shouldn't be like that. It should be tight. So I think I have a bad saggy canvas that I need to throw out, unfortunately. And the other thing that could have happened is it could have left too much paint on it. And so if you do that, it'll pool in the center because it almost feels like it's mostly in the center. And it's really loose and I won't be able to sell it to anybody or anything because the canvas is not good quality now. So unfortunately that happened, but I really like how it came out besides that. Um, yeah, so I'm probably going to redo this at some point and put it on a nice gallery wrap canvas that's tight and see how that comes out. But I just wanted to post an update about that. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.